I've been very fortunate for the past 12 years since I joined the Berry Center to be associated with a, uh, an extremely talented group of young students, pre-doctoral and post-doctoral fellows, that have really helped us push the boundaries of what's known about beta cell dysfunction and ways to prevent it. Right now, we're very excited about two areas of research. Earlier this year, we made a stunning discovery that uh, cells in the intestine, in the gut, could be turned by genetic manipulation into insulin-producing cells. Um, we were astonished when we first discovered this in laboratory animals, and we're now uh, very seriously trying to uh, leverage that information to develop a human equivalent of that observation that we can use to uh, develop new therapies for type 1 diabetes. And we've made enormous progress even in the short time since our initial discovery appeared. We're now at a stage where we can use um, human cells to uh, reproduce the process of gut differentiation. And we're trying, we're hoping to use those cells to test the idea that we can make new insulin producing cells in patients with type 1 diabetes. The second discovery that we're equally excited by, it's more recent, um, is the discovery that in the process of beta cell, what we call beta cell failure for want of a better term, so the, the slow chronic process whereby beta cells lose the ability to make insulin. We've discovered that cells revert to an earlier stage in their natural uh, history, in their life cycle, and they become what we call in the jargon progenitor cells. So progenitor cells are cells that have not yet taken up all the features of insulin producing cells, but have the wherewithal, if you will, uh, to become a fully functioning beta cell. Why is this important? This is important because for many years, people have thought that as beta cells fail, they simply die away. And what our discovery instead seems to point to is the fact that the cells just go under disguise, if you will. Uh, they play, if you will, a game of hide and seek with the immune system whereby by not making insulin, they're hoping to uh, evade the immune attack. And so, again, this was done primarily in laboratory animals. What we're trying to do now is to ascertain that the similar process goes on in patients with type 1 diabetes. And if it does, then we think we know of ways in which this uh, technically called the differentiation process, this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, reversal to an earlier stage of uh, uh, endocrine cell differentiation can be tweaked so as to turn cells back into insulin producing cells. On the day that our publication came out, we were already doing experiment in cells from patients that attend the Berry Clinic, the Berry Outpatient Clinic, with the hope to turn those cells into insulin producing cells and eventually return them to the patient's own body. I cannot think of another place where this would have happened in such a short period of time as it did here at the Berry Center.